This is the last step in the Joomla installation process. Before we start, make sure you have the database details that you created in the previous lesson. Now open your browser and bring up the web address where you uploaded your Joomla files. For these lessons, I'll create a website called joomlavideodemo.com. When I enter www.joomlavideodemo.com, Joomla recognises that it hasn't been set up yet and redirects to the web installer. Step 1 is to choose a language. I'll go with UK English and click the next button that appears in the top right. The installer then checks your web server to make sure that Joomla will run successfully. In lesson 1 I explained that there were certain requirements for using Joomla. If any of these first four are showing no then your server is not currently suitable for Joomla and you need to ask your host if they can install these items before you can proceed. If they can't help then there's no way around it and you will need to look for another host. This fifth item, configuration.php, often causes problems. You can do what the instructions say, but I find this is confusing for a lot of new users. So, if this shows no to you, stop this video now, move on to the next video where I show you how to work around it, and then come back to this lesson. There is also the recommended settings list here. If any of these are red, then you can continue, but you might run into difficulties down the track, so ask your host if they're able to make these changes on your account. Click the Next button in the top right and read the license details. Then click Next again. Now we enter your database details. These are the database details that we created in the previous videos, not anything else such as your FTP details. Unless your host has told you otherwise, the host name is localhost, so enter that here. Then enter the database username here. In my case, I used Joomla vi underscore demo. Then the database password. And finally the database name, which in my case was Joomla vi underscore video demo. As long as you enter the correct details, when you click Next, you'll see this screen. The FTP layer is a nice feature, but it can cause problems. In this case, we'll leave it off, as you can still install Joomla without it. So click Next. Now, give your site a name. Enter your email address. and enter yet another password. This password will allow you to access the Joomla backend, so make a note of it. This should be a different password to your FTP password or your database user password. The last step is to install some sample data. This is a really good idea when you're starting out and I'll be referring to this data throughout the lesson, so go ahead and click the Install Sample Data button. This will take a second and then tell you that it's been successful. Click Next. As you can see, Joomla has now been successfully installed. However, before you can view the site, you need to delete the installation folder. Open your FTP software, I'll use FileZilla again, and log into your site. Then look for your installation folder. Right click this and choose delete. This removes the installation files from your website. Now you've finished, return to your web browser and click on site. You'll see a website full of the sample data we installed. You might like to spend a few minutes looking through the pages. In the next video, I'll give you an overview of the front end and back end of Joomla. Now that you've learnt these steps, go ahead and install Joomla at your site. 
You'll find this much easier when you have a printed reference with screenshots next to you as you go. And this is exactly what you'll get when you grab part two of this course, my advanced Builder Joomla website training. Click the link below to discover what's included.